We now turn on to the spotlight segment. And before though we do that review, let's take a little bit of a time and talk about some of the phones of 2022. I do want to submit though personally that 2022 was a very lousy year, you know, phone speaking uh, or speaking of phones. There wasn't much to write home about in the year of 2022, except for a few, you know, rays of hope here and there in the way of the S22. And of course, the one that, not Austin, Ed calls the feature. Actually, I think it's one of the highlights of the better phones of 2022. And I'm talking about the Pixel phone. That's how I see it. How about you guys? And then I think if we mix things in there, uh, the Pixel watch is probably one of the highlights and maybe the Pixel 6a. I think these are probably some of the uh, things that kind of make sense in 2022. Can we decide the Pixel Watch was rubbish compared to the Galaxy <laughs> One? I thought, I thought we trashed it like a few weeks ago. How is it a highlight all of a sudden? It is like, a highlight. Are, they, are those rose tinted spectacles you're wearing? Well, like, when, when... War, Warren is loving it, even though it's a lady's watch. <laughs> yeah. no, oh, Dr. When, Dr. John. <laughs> when, did, when did this. <laughs> Well, here, Warren will love everything pixel related. So, well, here's why I think that the um, the Pixel Watch stands out because it's it's it looks different than any of the other watches out there. Either some of those that either you know square looking or whatever, but they take a different approach, and that dome shape uh, makes it stand out out of all the watches out there. So that's the one thing that makes it, you know, sits out there as a distinguished um, tech. That's my personal view. Uh, how about you guys? Why does it stand out, though? What, what's, what do you mean it looks different? It, it's a watch, surely, unless it's like, I don't know, is it a triangle or something? Like, what? what? How does it look different? <laughs> Warren, you should have known. I just explained that. that. I said it's a, like a dome shape. It's a, and it's the it's only one that looks that way. Shaped. What, yes. But why do you even want a dome? So you're basically wearing a boob on your wrist. Uh, you mm. got you got to feel it to see what I'm talking about, um, Fee. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Well-crafted. The look of it is just beautiful. I've, I've seen them all you know, that, from the Galaxy watches to the fossil uh, gens and all of that. But this one looks different. But why does that matter? I mean, technically. And I think from... where Google strikes the balance also, even though I don't like it, but they have that size that is good, whether you're a lady or you're a guy, you know. But for me, though, I would have liked to see a bigger watch. And so that's w one of those falls. But I mean, that's probably me being selfish. But it is their first one, isn't it? So they might. It is their first one. They might yeah. do another one. Absolutely. Um, they're not a startup, are they? Like, you can't go, oh, it's their, their first, first time they've tried to do this. No, I mean, I was going <laughs> to say it's taken them a very long time to do a watch, really, hasn't it? It's, you know. How long have they been making the Pixel phones? Well, we're on the Pixel 7, Seven now, years, aren't we? Yep. Yes, it has taken them <laughs> a long time. You know what? Really they were ridiculous. supposed to start in 2016, and everyone thought they were going to, and then it didn't happen. Instead, we had something from LG called the LG Sports or something like that, and uh, it just it just faded out of memory until they returned this year. Yeah, and they can't say that it was because of COVID because COVID didn't happen until 2020. So yeah, no, no, COVID cannot be blamed that. here. No. <laughs> I can't blame COVID on this one. Yeah, we're going to blame COVID that's going to happen in four years that we nobody even knows about yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the COVID is always a safe place for people to blame things on. Uh, but no, Google cannot blame this one on COVID. I would have liked to see Google Pixel watches launch in India. They have not launched this uh, Pixel watch in India this year, at least. Yeah, I don't think I've I've seen them here as well. I've seen the Pixel um, the Pixel Buds, haven't seen the Pixel Watch. So, and let's be honest, you guys yeah. haven't missed it. No, no I you're haven't. getting a special. You're getting a special design, Mariam. You're not getting a dome. You're getting a pyramid watch. 
Uh, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. And, right. and, and the pyramid, by the way, is a beautiful looking thing. I got stacks of, I you know, yeah. looking but, stacks But how the hell am I going to wear that? That's just a little look weird. I don't have and like... It's dangerous. Oh but it's uh, dangerous. You'll make, a point. you'll make a point, though. <laughs> You're right. I would stand up like, okay, this is the Egyptian girl in there. She's way up there. It could, <laughs> it could be a really good um, self-defense weapon though couldn't right it? oh my god yes yeah the difficulty yeah. is though the uh, retailers will get done for pyramid selling we know i suppose or we can make like we can get a sphinx one i <laughs> think like... that what 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 needed to happen and i can see why they didn't release uh, it in some other countries but they could at, at least you know release the um bluetooth or wi-fi version because maybe they're talking about maybe compatibility of the lte model but at least they should have made the um, regular ones available. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's what they should have done. Yeah. I missed yeah. this somewhere. There is there is only an LTE one. No, there's no, there's versions. both. Hmm. So why is why would it be a problem then? Or or, or do you mean that they they'd want to release them both at once? And that's yeah. Why what I'm saying is that you know when you look at it like the 12 countries that they have it in, um, I, I, I'm just kind of, you know, speculating that this may be one of the reasons is that they're not sure which of the carriers in those countries is going to be compatible or whatever the case may be, but at least they could just release the um, the Bluetooth model or the Wi-Fi model and yeah. not worry about the LTE but leave the LTE in few countries. And that a lot of people will be satisfied with that because honestly, not everyone is going to buy the LTE uh, model unless you're like me, who's tired of, you know, um, the Wi-Fi version. So I got the LTE instead. Oh, I, I never buy the LTE versions because the amount yeah, of money you pay extra, like I have my phone anyway, so... Yeah, yeah, it's not so like you won't have the watch on you and don't have the phone at the same time. I don't think it, you know, it's... Yeah, and it's then you have to usually pay your carrier like at least $10 extra a month just to have Yeah, but no, no, exactly. Google, like mine, no, there's no such thing with mine. Um, It just uses my whatever, and it's, I like it. I was able to take it out, leave my damn phone at home, and that's what I've always dreamt of. I don't want to be taking both things at the same time, if I'm going to take both, then I might as well not worry about the damn watch. That was the point. See, I don't go anywhere without my phone. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, I, I think that's I, the point I, of I having a out. phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have it on my watch, then what's the point? Yeah, fair enough. So I think maybe the phone, well, not the phone of the year, but a most improved phone would probably be the Pixel 6a because, you know, in a year, and it's been like this for a couple of years where all the flagships are pretty much the same. I mean, they're a little bit better. You know, I think in the mid range is where we're really seeing improvement for the price. I mean, the Pixel 6a packs the same processor as their flagship phones, and you can get it for four, $450 at the most. I think it even went on sale for down to as low as $300 at some points this year, which I think is really a great deal. And, you know, even Samsung makes some good priced mid-rangers, um, like the A53. I think it's highest price is 350 maybe. So I think that's where we're seeing the best uh, bang for your buck these days, especially this year. Yeah, my mom got the A53 and she really likes it. I think if there was the most buggiest phone of the year that I watched would go to the 6A because there are so many bugs. Your fingerprint sensor cannot be rec your fingerprint sensor does not recognize your fingerprint, your battery life dips like anything. So and it's the it's a heater, portable heater. At least it was <laughs> a heater when uh, it just came out. Now it is a little stabilized, but still the bugs are still there. So that is the buggiest one of the year. I don't That's know. the Pixel Austin, experience. Uh, and I don't know, Austin, maybe maybe it's your unit that's having that stuff. I haven't seen that as a widespread thing, so I don't know where you're getting that from. 
most of the tech channels in India are talking about those bugs. Well, oh, maybe the one sent to India, maybe the phone doesn't like India or something. Yeah, but, maybe. Uh, frankly, I, I don't know. Maybe it's your network. Yeah. You know, I don't see that, you know, with um, the one I got for my kids. The other interesting thing as well you're getting, I don't know, it was a trend in 2022, it's probably earlier, uh, GSM Arena sort of coined this. It's it's sort of between mid, mid ranges and flagships, and they're calling them flagship killers, which is probably in about the $600 range, where it's got most of uh, the performance of the flagships, maybe the cameras, but they, they've cut some corners. So, so, so the Xiaomi I got was a little bit like this. So it has a very low IP rating. It's got a plastic frame, but it has the 8 plus 1 gen chip. It has, uh, you know, 120 watt wireless charging, 200 megapixel camera, and, and there are a few others in that range. So, so somewhere that closes off the you know, between the A53 and the S22. And I say GSM Arena seems to call them flagship killers. Mm -hmm. I think the oh. Pixel 7 falls in that camp. Just the regular mm -hmm. 7, not the Pro. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's the year for, of flagship, fla like of mid-range phones, not flagship, like flagship phones. And to be honest, as a Samsung fan, I haven't seen anything fancy from Samsung flagship-wise this year. Um, in fact... Most of the things that they dropped had so many bugs. I remember reading a post, a blog post about someone saying that they released the December update for the S21 Ultra and S21 Plus phones without the security up, like the security patch for December, which was kind of funny to me. So I think it's more of a mid-range phones and um from what I'm seeing, the rumors and all that, the S22, like the S23 is not surprising at all it doesn't have anything fancy um so i think mid-range phones are going to definitely um get the best ranking this year and it is the year sony gave a phone uh two years worth of android updates uh the uh xperia uh mark 3 has got android 13 having come out on android 11 which must be a first for sony yeah i think it, um and samsung this year i think it needs to be pointed out they've done a killer job i mean there's a lot of bugs and stuff but as far as the amount of um, updates they've released for the amount of devices they've done much better this year than they have done in the past i mean i've gotten i've had my one ui 5 on my tablet for probably two months now at least a month and it used to be they they wouldn't even touch the tablets until like the next year so they've done a lot better with updates this year I agree with you, John, but the thing is, you can put like as many updates as you want, but the problem is you should put out updates with them, um, don't have like not having bugs. So I think, and it's going to be even harder fixing those bugs for all these phones that got the new update. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's true. But mm -hmm. people, I think people complain more about not having updates than they complain about bugs. So Samsung's just personally... trying to cater to what the people want. I personally would want to wait for a whole year but not have books that would um literally like you know make things take longer to accomplish like we have bugs that I haven't seen since Android 6. I'm not kidding. Well, Miriam girl, I, I had to break this to you but you're not going to find such an update that will not have bugs and it doesn't matter matter who it is coming from and like John says I think what people want is to be on the current uh, OS iteration. And that's what people want, to be honest. Um, bugs, and sometimes it, it depends on who you're talking to. Uh, some people don't give a rat. But frankly, I think Samsung has done a killer job this year. And also Sony, kudos to Sony for uh, actually doing better this year than the previous years. And uh, Sony, if you're hearing BAU, BAU salutes you for doing a good job this year. I think this year the technologies that improved were the camera, which now there's the X80 Pro, which is coming out with a one-inch sensor. The megapixel war has started. The charging, the fast charging has really... There is going to be a phone which is coming with 240-watt fast charging. So that is really exploding and improving this year. 
but i would like to see some work being done on the battery technology so like you charge your phone once and maybe it would last a week maybe have these graphene batteries that they were talking about some years back so i would like to see some work being done on the batteries uh, next year and another bad trend that is coming next year is one of the company is launching phones with rgb so imagine phones with rgb at the back of it here we want to reduce heat from the mobile and rgb is going to contribute a little bit of heat now although not much but rgb on phones i mean you could do something better than that can you tell what, us what that what is rgb Austin? Austin? rgb is red green and blue lights so there are those blinking lights at the back of the phone and the whole phone's what? back Why? or edges of the phone's back are covered with blinking it's, lights it's just cool anyone and remember like, the christmas tree phone we talked about um, yeah. i think that was the uh, nothing fee mm-hmm. remember that nothing phone <laughs> yeah this is obviously not catered to blind people but like it'll give you cert you can customize it so certain it'll light up a certain color if it's a certain um notification from a certain app and that sort of I thing. Like that. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah it is who cool. Who puts their phone on the table upside down? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> well, you know, Austin, you, you would if you had about, LEDs on it. Austin, you talked about battery, and I think that the final way to solve this battery thing is what the european are thinking returning us to those removable batteries and frankly i don't care until we really get the technology right battery will always be a problem and like i said you know we could have 10 years of os support but if the battery is not going to last what's the point uh so until we have a better technology for the battery it will always be a problem coming back to the rgb it is going to create a lot of problem with people those who have some disorder which in which they have uh, some problem when they see flashing or blinking lights and uh, that's going to have a lot of problem also we are going to see a lot of folding phones next year one of the disadvantages of having a removable battery is that uh, people replace them with very cheap non original batteries so they may cause the phones to explode Yeah so Samsung there's no win win situation. Samsung phones explode anyway don't they? Even I was going to say all we can have an exploding phone. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's one of the really features. <laughs> That's not a bug that really, feature. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Does not really matter. But I think a removable batteries are still a safer option even if Samsung phone explodes that that's just something unique about Samsung <laughs> you know like you can have a phone that explodes <laughs> and it's, it's kind of I stuff. I would like to be able to remove batteries because then if you're back because often the biggest problem most people have with their phone apart from if they break the screen is that the battery goes and they get a whole new phone because the battery's no good if you could just buy a new battery like you could in the days of you know Nokia Nokia yeah, supremacy Nokia. You you just buy a new battery off off of, off the web, wouldn't you? And um, right. mm-hmm. and that'd be a lot cheaper and more sustainable for the environment as well. John sitting there thinking, "Nope, I'm going to buy a new phone." <laughs> oh yeah, John. John looks on. Want, like, Anytime, but John I doesn't couldn't... need an Wait. excuse to buy. <laughs> I've got a question for you. An important question. Uh-huh. Did you set a gesture to Amazon yet? <laughs> you need it. <laughs> no, no, I did not. But you I just say. It. Okay, G, open Amazon. <laughs> so, yeah. Um but yeah, what, what were we talking about? Batteries. I had something I was going to say, but I'm on my third drink, so I think it's gone. Yeah, I think that one is gone with your gin tonic or whatever that thing you have there, mm-hmm. John. Uh yeah, but we're talking about those batteries and frankly, I think that the most important thing is the battery because it doesn't matter how beautiful how great looking your phone is if it doesn't have power to keep that baby rolling i think it's all nonsense but like yeah. my british friends will say it's uh what's that word rubbish <laughs> yeah i think i remembered what i was going to say it's so i think samsung actually if you i mean it's cheaper than buying a new phone but it's still expensive if you pay for a screen replacement they'll actually replace the battery at the same time. 
So even if your screen is not broken, you could get a screen replacement and they'll replace the battery for you. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's, that's annoying. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's kind an of annoying option. because because you pay for you pretty much pay for both when you don't want it. So yeah, yeah I mean it's it's a bit annoying. I've never had a phone where the battery health has been a problem because I don't change my phones as often as John does, but. I change them relatively frequently, and I'm sure the phone I got rid of had slightly less charge than when I bought it, but I've never noticed. Nobody changes their phone as often as John does. <laughs> no, but you know, like, I, I do mine 12 to 24 months, and I, the, the battery health really isn't a problem for me anyway. I, I've never gone, oh no, I really wish I could change the battery in this phone. Mm -hmm. What'll happen to the waterproof? How will they maintain that's that? true. Yeah, that's Austin, true. Actually, Austin, the uh, Galaxy S5 was waterproof. It was the first one, so that's no complaint. Uh, I mean, it's no yeah. reason to not give us removable batteries. I think all just... of these are just excuses, like yeah. waterproof. Like, like, well, the headphone jack makes it not waterproof. No, that's not true. It's Having not... a removable battery or an SD card slot makes it not waterproof. No, that's not true because you have a SIM tray, you have a USB port, you have other things that. You can waterproof, so that's... It's and just, they're, they're just excuses to remove things or to not mm -hmm. do certain stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And tell me, Austin, when was the last time you took a phone into the pool? You know what I mean? No one yeah, does right. that. I mean, <laughs> Look, even even if the phone is waterproof, no one is actually... No one wants to risk that. To be honest, I won't risk that. So it's, it's just... I don't know. I don't think you'd like... No one does take their phones to, to water. I no, no one so. will purposely do it, but what if something spills on the phone? Yeah, but even at this Ooh, point, yeah. even something spills on the phone, uh, frankly, it's not going to get in there because it has a battery. Yeah. They'll have seals around it. So that that mm -hmm. is not the problem here. It's The problem is that these companies are just being so greedy. And, and thanks to the European Union, they're getting them to make changes. And I love that. I, I want to see that happen. You can take the, you can take a phone to water, but you can't make it drink. Thank you very much, Ed. <laughs> right. That's yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>